Hello and welcome to the third part of this series on Automation for Modeling with STAT. I am Surajit Ghosh and in this session, I will cover how we can automate complex load application in STAT using different custom tool. I will cover three missing load items in this session which are not yet available in STAT. Moving load on inclined plane from any global or local direction. Hydrodynamic load on tank structure to simulate seismic activity and wind load on pitch tube. In the first two part of this series, I have already covered a basic introduction and capabilities of structural automation with OpenStat. Also covered different automated tools using which we can generate a complex structural model with geometry, section and specification. Few of those tools are developed using inbuilt script editor of STAT few in Excel using VBA and few advanced tools using Python. We can easily link all these custom tools to STAT interface and use it or open it as an individual application. You can check those videos for more details. In STAT, we can apply different types of load using default option, but there are few missing items which are required in different projects like moving load in horizontal direction, wind load on slope group or hydrodynamic load for tank. To apply this load, we need to calculate the load intensity manually for each model which is time consuming. With some automated approach, we can eliminate this manual work. Consider this bridge model. It has two ramp at both end and I want to apply a moving load on this entire bridge deck from all three direction. Instead, we can add a vehicle load data under vehicle definition and apply the load on any member using moving load generator. But we cannot specify any load in X or Z axis. Only vertical load component is available. Also increment in Y direction is not available. So it is not possible to apply a vehicle load on this bridge using moving load feature. Only option is manual load application where we have to create around 40 load case for each vehicle location and add load component in all axis. For a 3 axel vehicle with 30 generated load case in all 3 axis, total number of load item is 540. Huge time is required to add all this load at different location. There is a better solution. I have developed a tool to apply moving load on any member in any local or global direction and it can be used to apply load on any plane including inclined ramp. It's very easy to use. We can specify initial and final position of the vehicle either by wheel location or distance from the edge. For this model, load application starts when the vehicle enters the bridge and ends when rear wheel exit. Along with this, we can specify length increment, load at each wheel, in all three direction and axis system, either global or local. Local axis is used when load is moving on an inclined plane. These are specified in base unit. For this model, kilonewton meter unit. For load application, either we can provide member number or group name. I have also included an option to extract member number from STAT. We can select the first member group on which load will be applied. Then use this option to get the member number. Again select the members in the second line one by one and extract the member number. That's it. No other input is required and we are ready to generate moving load which takes few seconds. 42 new loads are added to the model. We can expand any load and check the load item. Under each load case, concentrated member load is added at different wheel location in three direction. For each wheel, vertical load is combined with horizontal and axial load. It is repeated for all 42 load case. We can also check the graphical representation of wheel movement 
starting from load case 1 when the front wheel enters the bridge. Then gradually it proceeds and all wheel loads are applied on the ramp. Then move to the deck. Finally, it starts to descend and stops when the rear wheel exits the structure. Using this automation tool, we can bypass one limitation of stat and tedious load generation process, apply the vehicle load on entire span, and this can be further combined with other dead and lateral load case. These are primary load case. We can easily combine this with other load case using manual or automated method. We can also apply moving load on any finite element mesh. Consider this model. I have modeled a ramp using FEM in physical modeler. It is supported on few column and beam. Vehicle axle line is modeled with a dummy member. It is easy to model this type of structure in physical modeler rather than analytical modeler as the internal nodes and connectivity between plate and member are determined by the program. Plate and members are meshed properly for beta load transfer. I have also created two beam groups which I want to use for load generation. Loads will be added in the analytical modeler using same load generation tool. This time I'll use member group provide the group name and first member number. With this input, we can generate moving load on the ramp. 14 loads are generated to cover entire length of ramp. All load items are applied properly on the member. Then it is transferred to the connecting plate. For this type of custom job, automation is the best choice which can save lot of human effort. Using this tool, we can apply moving load on any beam line, whether it is in a plane, inclined or curved. Curved deck is also common for any bridge structure. We can easily model it in STAT using proper coordinate value or using different options available in the UI using structure widget or any automated tool. The problem is, we cannot apply moving load on this curved gutter using default moving load feature and normally go for manual approach. With this tool, we can select the beam lines on which the axle moves, fetch those member number directly as an input, provide information about load data and direction, which is very important for this curved gutter as load in the global axis is not sufficient here. Finally, apply the moving load components on relevant member. Similar to our previous examples, on this curved deck, multiple loads are generated to represent the moving load. Load generation starts from one end, move on the curved girder, following the profile of the curve, then exit from another end. This eliminates any manual effort required for curb bridge analysis. Using this tool with few simple inputs, we can simulate a vehicle movement on any type of plane. That's all about moving load generator and how this can be helpful for different type of projects. Another example, we can simulate hydrodynamic load on any tank structure. When any underground or overhead tank is subjected to seismic force, fluid inside the tank starts to move. There are two modes of vibration, impulsive and convective mode, also known as slossing effect. Instead, we cannot apply this hydrodynamic load using default load item, but using a tool, we can accurately apply this load on any tank model. In STAT physical modeler, a new structure widget is included using which we can model any underground or add grade tank with finite element mesh. Here, all beam and plate in different plane are connected properly to create the tank geometry. Also, most of the gravity and lateral load including fluid and soil load are auto-generated based on depth of liquid in each compartment and soil, water table depth, 
except hydrodynamic load which is critical for design? These load heights are considered during mesh generation. To generate this load based on IS1893 part 2, I have developed this tool. Here we can specify the data required for load calculation like zone, importance and response reduction factor, some information about load direction and tank including liquid height in each compartment. On basis of this data, impulsive and convective pressure is calculated and applied on tank wall and base. This step starts load generation process. During load generation, additional stat models with isolated wall are generated in the background with proper wall data, support and loading. These are used to calculate the deflection value required to compute the time period and pressure intensity of each wall both in x and z direction for impulsive and convective mode. Then a varying plate pressure load is applied on the wall and base under reference load case. Load generation is now complete. We can check the STAD model. Several primary and reference load are generated for this hydrodynamic load. Inertia load, load for impulsive and convective mode for each compartment are added under separate reference load case. For this model, these two loads are created for inertia load in Z and X direction. As you can see, load is applied on wall and base slab as uniform pressure load. For compartment 1, for impulsive and convective mode, Load applied from X and Z direction are added under this 4 load case. Check the impulsive mode for X direction. Load is applied on base slab and YZ wall up to the fluid level with minimum intensity at top, gradually increase with depth. For convective mode, similar pressure load is generated on wall and base in X direction and in Z direction. For compartment 2, similar load items are created for impulsive and convective mode. Finally, all these reference load are combined under 4 primary load case. 2 are for impulsive mode, where impulsive load for all compartments are combined with the inertia load in that direction and 2 are for convective mode. These loads will be used for analysis. It might take several hours to calculate and apply these loads manually, but using automation, we can complete the process within a minute. There are several other scenarios where automation is useful, like importing pipe stress data from any third party application to STAT and apply on the pipe rack structure, or generation of wind load on inclined roof of a warehouse which I have already discussed in my last session on wind load generation, even generation of a retaining wall structure with FEM. That's all for today. In summary, we can use different automation approach in any project to minimize the repetitive effort, save time or to handle any limitation of the program. It is always better to develop an automation tool rather than repeating same manual process again and again. In next part of this series, I'll cover how we can utilize automation for analysis, result extraction and comparison of models. Thanks for joining.